I think the first time I ever heard the word coronavirus or COVID-19 um, was December 2019. I was in New York on vacation and I was reading the news and I saw some articles saying strange new virus discovered in Wuhan, China or like new variant of uh, coronavirus, new variant of SARS has been discovered in China, 100 cases. And at that time, I, I didn't really think anything of it. I was like, oh, it's just another disease. It's just like people are trying to get people scared to make money on their news sites or whatever. I didn't think it was anything important. I never thought it was going to affect me. Well, um, I'm not sure I remember, but I'm fairly certain the first time that I did hear it, I definitely did not expect it to go the way that it was going right now. Um, I did not expect it to become such a huge deal or such a huge pandemic to arise from this um, disease. And, you know, it's because it's something that nobody really even wants to even think about. And yeah, it's just really something that I did not see coming. I haven't, I'm not very familiar with like past diseases and stuff, but from what I do know, uh, diseases that start out like that, where people don't know where it came from or if they don't have much control, tend to spread. So I was anticipating it. Uh, and then as December went on, went into January, you started hearing things like first case in Europe, first case in the US, like 100 deaths in the US in one day. I was more, I wasn't really like, afraid of it at the time because during the be like the few months that COVID first came around, everyone more took it as like a joke. It wasn't a serious thing. Now, if I get it, I'm not so much scared for myself. I'm scared of giving it to someone else who can be in serious danger, like my grandparents or for, or for my parents or sent, bringing it to my friends. And that that's what scares me. It's not the deadliness of the virus. It's how it affects elder people, like my grandparents, for example. And still, I was like, "Whoa, it must be crazy up there." Good thing I don't live there. But then, of course, um, we got news that this that our school was going to shut down, and that was um, that was the first time really I really realized that it was going to actually affect me. I remember uh, the day that we first closed down school here at ICS. Um, I was really shocked because I wasn't really paying attention to it that much at the time because it was still fairly new. And that's when I started to realize, oh, this is something really, this is something that's really going to affect all of us for um, quite a bit. And it was a really scary thought. I remember that day. Um, I was pretty scared of not being able to see my friends for a long time, so. Honestly, I was excited uh, and sad. Like it was a bunch of mixed emotions because I got to go back to Canada because of it and I've always wanted to live there, but it also kind of tore apart my friendship dynamic. The coronavirus hits and now we don't know if there's gonna be new people. We know there's people leaving, we know many people are never going to come back, but we also have no idea if anyone new is going to come. And so, uh, to have that idea that all of these close friends of yours are leaving, you're never going to see them again. And you're also, you also might not ever see any new friends again. You might not ever get new people coming into the class because people don't want to leave their countries. People are sheltering in place. Nobody's traveling. You might not get these replacements, and that makes it a lot harder to deal with. When we went, we went, I believe, at the end of the second week of March, we went to do online school, and we were told that we were going to be doing online school for two weeks, and then that the situation would be reevaluated, and most likely we would come back to campus. Um, obviously, that was not the case. Uh, we did online school until, I believe, October of 2020, which is obviously more than two weeks. I picked up a sort of mentality saying or thinking that well these people are on some of them are on the other side of the planet what are they gonna do and then I started realizing the problems with this I and the last few months I realized how much work I actually had to catch up on so I was, I was doing I was staying up late almost every day sitting on my 
it's sitting at my computer at my desk until like 11 and 12 working and because of that I didn't get a very good sleep schedule and then as when the grade when the grades started coming in about my work I started after the after it when I was getting into that mentality that all that mattered is the work I started judging my worth based off the grades that I got from those assignments which isn't good for you I'm not sure whether to feel angry or sad for the people that believe that they should protest in masks or um, any issues that arise like these. Um, I'd like you to pardon my language, but I think people can be very stupid sometimes. <laughs> um, I'm really frustrated by the fact that we live in a society in which we have so much technology, the ability for everyone to gain information so easily, and yet there are still people that believe that, you know, the earth isn't round, or you shouldn't vaccinate your children, or you shouldn't wear masks. It frustrates me because I am following the procedure, and a lot of people that I know are, but it's because of the people that aren't. It's because of the people that refuse to follow the rules, follow basic knowledge. It's because of those people that we're still here even a year later, and it's just really frustrating, and I don't know whether to feel angry that I'm still here in my bedroom or whether to just be kind of sad that a lot of people are being put in danger because of their lack of, um, lack of knowledge. I, I'm a strong supporter of the right to protest, of the right to, to petition your government for change, of the right to disagree with an action that your government has taken. And I completely support their right to be here, their right to be in these organizations, their right to protest the government. That's fine. But the problem is, is that this is such a, a world problem and them protesting is not, it's not about their personal civil liberties. It's not about them. It's not about Mr. Protester who went out because he wants to get a haircut. It's not about him. And for, for them to be out there, for them to be protesting or for them to not do social distancing or not wear masks, for them to disobey these, these mandates, it's not putting just them at risk, it's putting everybody at risk. People who can't wear masks, people who have to go out. These first responders, medical workers, essential workers, all these people, it's, it's, it's them that are being put at risk by these protests. Old people, people who couldn't get any treatment because of their immune systems, like immuno, immunosuppressed people. It's, it's them that are being put at risk and, and to endanger others because you feel that you're civil liberties are being violated. There has to be an extent to which you have to accept some some curtailing of your of your rights in order to assist the survival of your society. But how does it make you feel? Well, I mean it makes me feel really upset because I have relatives that are high risk, I have relatives that are medical workers, and to see people who who have no regard for them, who seem to only care about their own rights their own ability to get a haircut or go outside or or whatever they want to do. It's it's really upsetting. I honestly thought, like, how could people think this? Um, and I understand people have different beliefs and whatever they think is going on affects their actions for sure. But I had a really, I just found it hilarious, really, that people reacted in, in protest against wearing masks. To be isolated with, no, with nobody to, to interact with, nobody to see, to just sit in your house for weeks, months at a time, it's extremely difficult. Even once you start doing online schooling, you see people virtually, you see people in Zoom, it's not the same. And it's, it's extremely like mentally exhausting to have to get up every day, turn on your computer, stare at your computer for hours on, on end every day, no social, physical social interaction at all. It's, it's extremely degrading to one's mental health. It makes you exhausted and sad all the time. It's very hard. We're going to get through this because, well, we are humans. We've adapted so much and we have the power of science and knowledge on our hands. So you have to trust. You can't give up right now because we're going to get through this. It might not be soon, or it might be very soon, but you gotta stick in there, man.
You just got to make sure that you keep on pushing and believing in the power of science. My parents always tell me you want to keep the people you care about close to you and that, you know, things always even out. So something good will come around sooner or later. Just find a friend or a cousin or a trusted family member or maybe just um, just find someone who will sit down and listen just so you can clear up all that stuff because oftentimes at least this is something that happened to me when you bottle up those feelings they just get worse and worse and worse but when you let them out you're, you're to like a friend or your parents or your brothers or sisters it helps because they can help you keep going keep trying keep persevering because it's not going to last forever. It'll get better. All of the problems that you're experiencing, the, the depression, the exhaustion, the, the lack of, of friends, of social interaction, it's going to, it's going to get better. It's going to end. The, the pandemic is going to pass. It's all temporary.